All right, today we're talking about the reality that God's done in your life, but how that reality can only expand and change so much if we refuse to take action and partner with the Holy Spirit. So we have to talk about a really serious subject, sin and what we're presenting ourselves to, but it's really, really good content in this passage today. So come and read it with me. Hey everybody, welcome to Bible Time. Craig here. Thanks for joining today. We are in Romans chapter 6, starting in verse 5. And so grab a Bible if you have one, grab a pen. I just would like to invite you to get in the habit of cutting that thing up, engaging with the scripture, uh, underlining the things that stick out to you, taking notes next to it. I think that this is a great way to uh, engage with the Bible as you read it, that we could sort of evaluate what it is that God's speaking to us. Take a little note of what the Holy Spirit says because you may, may not remember it, but you can go back to it later on. And So anyway, this is a place where we read the Bible together every day and we're just trying to grow in a relationship with Jesus and our obedience to Him. So we're jumping in verse, uh, verse 5 and I kind of stopped right here in the middle of a section. I don't know what the reason was yesterday, but um, so just to recap, he's talking about baptism here, and this is a really significant thing that he's saying about it, and so uh, it's going to continue to talk about that here in verse 5, so I just thought maybe I'd recap this real quick. He says, do you not know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? This is this is like a, a you know, deeply significant and mystical thing that says that we, as we were put under the water, in a way, we were baptized into the death of Jesus. We were buried, therefore, with him in baptism uh, into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in the newness of life. And so there's this correlation between Jesus being raised, which obviously he was done, he was raised in the physical, us being raised out of the water and then the third thing would be walking in the newness of life. And so those three things go hand in hand according to Paul. And so they should go hand in hand according to us as well. All right, here we go. Verse 5. For if we have been united with him in death, in a death like this, in a, in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Okay, so... There's a correlation. There's there's correlations that he's making here. Okay, so we were buried with Jesus, we're raised with Jesus, uh, newness of life. Okay, so the second section he's saying we were united with him in a death like his through again through baptism, and that we will also be united with him in a resurrection like his. Okay, so. I don't get the impression that this second one is talking about coming up out of the water. For it says we shall certainly. I It just seems like what he's talking about here is that that in baptism, in a sense, we're dying with him, but that in the end, we will also, like after our real death, we will also be resurrected the same way that he was resurrected. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. Okay, I love this. So our old self was crucified with him. Think about that. Your old self was crucified with Jesus. And it says that, that the body of sin might be brought to nothing. Like what is that the body of sin? I think he's talking about um, the capacity for sin to control you. That, and, and we're going to see this in a little bit, a little bit later on too, that 
there's this concept, biblical concept, that before you're in Christ, you weren't able not to sin. That, in a sense, we are all slaves to sin apart from Christ. But in Christ, you can still choose to sin, but you you are not bound to it. It's a total choice at that point. It, when you are in Christ, you are completely free from the harness of sin, the grip, the chains of sin on your life. And I think that this is the beginning of alluding to that exact thing that he's going to describe a little bit later on. That the body, the, the, the embrace, the... Um, you know, slavery to sin has been brought to nothing because Jesus was crucified and we are crucified with him. And then this term that we always want to pay attention to, so that, which is describing for us, this is what God has done. And now, so that, this is what he wants the result to be. That we would no longer be enslaved to sin. So we are not slaves to it. And he did all this so that we wouldn't stay enslaved to it um, it's you know the court the the analogy is this now I've heard this I don't I actually don't know if this is true I assume it's true because I've heard it a bunch of times but the idea that you can train an elephant a massively strong creature uh, through tying it with a, a really strong rope in a certain space and then uh, later on you can tie them with just the tiniest little thread and they'll stay in the same space because they've been trained they've gotten used to that harness and even though they're so much stronger than the thread they can just snap it and, and break free they've become accustomed to basically the slavery and so the idea is that when you have Christ you have the power to break free from that that chain but if we stay enslaved to sin, it's because we choose to stay enslaved to it. And so this right here, again, describes what God's desire for us, what, what his plan for us is, is it? So, so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin, period. Now, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. So you must also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ. This is one of my favorite verses right here in Romans. It's a, it's a, it's a, not one of the super popular ones. You know, all of Romans chapter eight is popular. Romans three twenty three, six twenty three, Romans five eight, Romans one sixteen. There's so many Romans twelve one and two. There's so many good passages in Romans, but I love this passage, um, and the reason that I love it is because of this word. So what it's what it's what Paul's describing is the reality that a believer finds himself in. That if you are in Christ, if you have put your faith in Jesus, you've been baptized, you've been buried with Christ. It's mystical, it's spiritual, it's deep, it's it's amazing. But you've been buried with Jesus. You've been come out of the water in the newness of life. You will receive resurrection one day, just like Jesus. You've received the power to put to nothing the body of sin. You have the ability not to walk enslaved to sin any longer, but we have to do something. You, says this verse 11, so you, you must consider yourself dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ. You must consider yourself dead to sin and alive to God. I think that this is so significant because there is a reality that that is true, it's present, it's it's what's going on right now, like it or not, that like um, 
live into it or not, there's a reality. You, you know, you're raised with Christ. You're you're free. You're a son or daughter of God. You're filled with the Holy Spirit. There, these are realities for the believer that's in Christ. These are true things, right? It's actually reality. But then there are ways in which this reality um, affects the world around us, just no matter what we do. And then there are ways that this reality affects us and the world around us, but it's based on something. And there's there's so many things in the faith that are like this. There's there's also so many things in the faith that are just they're just true no matter what we do about it. It's just you know God God has done something and we can't our uh, our work or or inaction doesn't affect it at all. It's just what God's done. But there's a lot of things in the faith in the spiritual life that is. Um, contingent contingent on you know like in the passage that says if my people will pray if my people will humble themselves and pray then I will come and heal their heal, heal their land this is a contingency okay God's not saying if you don't do that you're not gonna be saved you're not gonna go to heaven no no but he's saying in this situation if if you humble yourself and pray I will come and heal your land this this is to God's people back in Chronicles um, and so there, there are lots of contingencies, contingencies, contingencies like that in the scriptures. You know, like God prepared good works in advance that we should walk in them, Ephesians 2. But you know as well as I know that if we don't choose to walk in those things, we're not going to actually accomplish what he's already planned for us. And so there's a reality, and then there's a, a, a human intervention that brings that reality to maybe more fruitfulness. And so this is... This is a case where God is saying, you, if you're in Christ, you are set free from sin. But unless you consider yourself set free from sin, you might just fall into it and give into it and live into it over and over and over again, year after year, until you die. But if you consider yourself dead to sin and you consider yourself alive to Christ, then you can embrace what it is that God has offered you and called you to. But it has, we have to acknowledge it. We have to believe it. We have to consider ourselves dead to that thing and alive to God. So many believers that I talk to, and, and myself included at times, although I'm, I think I'm growing and I'm, I'm learning, like once your eyes are open to this, you can learn to spot the ways that you even deceive yourself in your heart and you can learn to fight these things. But so many believers, I I hear like give so much credit to addiction or certain sins or habits or that's just the way that I am or that's the way my family's always been or whatever. And we, we just sort of like fall back on this like, well, I just can't help it type situation. And what they're doing is they're not they're not considering themselves dead to that thing. They're giving power to that thing by saying, well, it, I can't, it's, you know, it's an addiction or I just can't stop it or whatever. But it, <laughs> so what they're considering is that that thing has power over them. And what the scripture is inviting us to is to consider that we are dead to that, that nothing controls us. Consider it, that nothing controls you. Consider that the spirit lives in you. Believe that the Spirit lives in you and that you are alive to God. That's what He's inviting us into, and that is the path to live the life that God has called us to. And so, um, man, what what's practical about this? Would you just take a second here? And I'm going to read a couple more verses, and we're going to close. Would you just take a second today, and and consider, think about the the things that you you know the habitual patterns of sin, yeah, sin, if it's sin, but maybe not even something you consider sin, but just, you know, like negative attitudes or or negative habits or, and maybe the habit's not even like wrong per se. It's just, um, it just produces no fruit in your life. I don't know. Like, li listen, I'm not trying to like apply or impute anything upon you. Just, would you just give the Holy Spirit a little bit of time to reveal to you about your heart is there are there ways in which you consider the world or your flesh or whatever to have more power than it actually does 
and could the Holy Spirit want to do something in you, in me, in, t- in terms of um, reminding us, like helping us know, like really know on the inside that we can consider ourselves dead to that and alive to God. So I think it's worthy to take a little bit of time to consider. Let's read a few more here. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. I love the, the correlation here. Uh, between the two. We'll go back to that a sec. Let not sin reign in your mortal body to make you obey its passions. Do not present your members to sin as instruments for unrighteousness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life, and your members to God as instruments for righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under the law, but under grace. Right? So, he's saying, consider yourself and... Consider yourself both dead to sin and alive to God. Consider yourself dead to sin and consider yourself alive to God. Okay? We need to consider both of those things. Similarly, he's saying, do not present yourselves to sin as instruments for unrighteousness, but present yourself to God. Okay, so consider yourself dead to sin and don't present yourself to sin. Consider yourself alive to God and present yourself to God. And present your members to God. Why? Because sin will have no dominion over you. Sin should have no dominion over you. But what you present yourself to is a choice. God is not going to control you. Just because you're saved... Just because he lives in you, he is not going to force you to do anything. You have to present your body, present uh, your will, present your words, present your time, present your finances. Bring to God what you have and say, God, I'm a servant of yours. Take it. I'm not going to give myself over to sin. I'm going to give myself over to you. And so there's something that God has done in us, and there's something that's our choice by way of response. So... um, I just want to encourage you to consider those things today and to not just think about them, but to say this week when I'm faced with with, um, temptations or or the habitual thing or sin practices or whatever, you're going to say in your mind, no, 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 I'm dead to you and I'm not going to give myself over to you. I'm presenting my body to God for his purposes, for his glory, and that I would walk in his ways all the days of my life. That's a decision that needs to turn into action as we follow Jesus. So I want to encourage you to do that today and to spend some time in prayer over this subject. Uh, And I'll plan on seeing you again tomorrow, verse 15. God bless.